Just how badly will the coronavirus hit the Chinese economy and the world economy? There are real worries out there. Chinese growth will drop from about a 6% annualized pace to 5%. And sparked fears of a global economic slowdown. The hit to tourism, industry, the supply chains, etc. In addition, many headlines cited two surveys. The first is by Peking and Tsinghua universities on February the 5th. That says 85% of small to medium-sized Chinese companies polled said they could last no more than three months. The other is conducted by American Chamber of Commerce Shanghai between February 11th through 14th, whereby nearly half of foreign companies in China said their operations were impacted. These are stressful times, but as one would note, many of these surveys and forecasts were made in early to mid-February when there was no end in sight to the outbreak. Since then, new cases have declined and work has started to resume. It has become a fluid situation that changes by the day, if not by the hour. That's why we need to pay attention not just to the headlines, but also the trend lines. In an exclusive interview with our program, China's National Grid says Guangdong saw a 62% increase in industrial electricity usage in a seven-day period since February the 10th. In Jiangsu, commercial electricity usage went up 35%. In Guangdong, over 60% of companies had reopened as of February the 17th. And we're talking about China's largest and second largest economies where many of its manufacturing and services are based. Even Apple said in its quarterly guidance that the disruption to their factories in China is expected to be, quote, temporary. In fact, since mid-February, those living in Beijing and other major cities saw businesses around them slowly reopen and familiar sites such as traffic jams returned. We are confident in the resilience of China's economy. In the short run, though, challenges remain. Many companies are still short-staffed due to self-isolation of their employees. And for others, cash flow is a real problem. To cope with that, new policies have been announced to exempt pension co-pays for private firms. 173 billion U.S. dollars have been injected into the financial system and pledges were made to lower borrowing costs. Implementation is key here. To transition from epidemic control mode to going back to work mode is a difficult shift. And path dependence, bureaucracy, and red tape can get in the way. This picture circulating on social media shows a company in one Chinese city needing at least nine stamps from authorities to resume production. Fortunately, the next day, public pressure kicked in and those procedures were simplified. Finally, the financial markets seem to think that the economic impact of COVID-19 will be short-term. Since mid-February, $730 million have flown back to emerging markets ETFs after two straight weeks of outflows on fears of the virus. China's stock market plummeted in the early days of the outbreak, but many investors bought the dip and the main indexes bounced back. There was also a similar V-shaped recovery story with the U.S. stock market, at least for now.